All right, then welcome back everyone. Let's solve this question minimum LCM. Now this is a beautiful question based on number theory. Like I can say this question is similar to that longest divisors interval because the observation that one needs to make here is just amazing. I really enjoyed solving this question. So if you are not, if you are not able to solve it, it's fine. Uh, this was not a pretty straightforward question. The question description is as simple as it can get. You are just given a single integer n, which is a positive integer. Uh, it is greater than or equal to 2. And you are supposed to find uh, two more positive integers, a and b, such that uh, a plus b is equal to n, right? Uh, but the condition that we are after is, uh, what we want to do is we want to minimize this quantity. LCM of a, b is as less as possible, right? So you are just like, the input is pretty simple. Input, you have an integer n, which is a positive integer, greater than or equals to 2. And you have to find uh, these two integers, a and b, a and b in such a way that uh, LCM of AB is as less as possible and A plus B is equals to N. How do you approach this question then? Uh, the first things first, let's think about the brute force, right? Uh, what is the brute force solution? So what you are given, uh, you are given N, right? So it is a positive integer. Uh, you are given, you have to find these two integers uh, such that this sum up to N, right? So you have to find two integers with sum up to N. So what all the possible combinations are there? So if you have N, the possible combinations are like this, right? 1, n minus 1. So I'm just uh, trying to find out what are the possible candidates for a and b, right? So 1, n minus 1 is a possible candidate. 2, n minus 2 is a possible candidate. 3, n minus 3 is a possible candidate. Uh, so on, uh, it goes something like this, right? So in the middle, uh, there will be a value like this. If it is an even number, it will be n by 2, n by 2, otherwise n by 2 minus 1, n by 2 plus 1, so on. But without loss of generality, let's say uh, n by 2, n by 2 will be there. And uh, so on, we will go till n minus 1, n 1. All in all, uh, what I'm trying to say is there will be a line of symmetry in the middle. A uh, line of symmetry in the middle, uh, in the sense, uh, things will start getting uh, symmetrical. In the sense, if there is 1, n minus 1, you can see there is n minus 1, 1. So if here there is 2, n minus 2, there will be somewhere here n minus 2, 2. So there will be a line of symmetry from which the pairs will... Uh, the only the order will change, but they'll be same, right? So that's that. So these are all the possible combinations, right? For A and B. So I'm just thinking about the brute force right now. I'm not mm, thinking uh, much here. So these are all the possible combinations of A and B. The first idea was, uh, uh, can we just uh, go through go the brute force way, figure out uh, like all the possible pairs, uh, and uh, select a pair which gives the minimum LCM, right? So here you can see uh, there are nearly order of n possible pairs, right? So order of n possible pairs. Even if you just uh, consider this line of symmetry, there will be n by 2 pairs. But all in all, you will have order of n pairs asymptotically, right? And uh, to verify, what is the value of LCM? So brute force will be uh, go through all the possible pairs, 1 n minus 1, 2 n minus 2, 3 n minus 3, n by 2 n by 2 till half part, right? So order of n in order of n time. And uh, for each pair, maybe you can find its LCM and take the pair with the minimum possible LCM. We have to print the pair actually, if you see. We have to print a and b so we have to check all the pairs okay so that's a brute force idea every like checking a pair will consist of a logarithmic time so it will be order of log c uh, this will be hmm, why i'm saying log c because it will be some constant in this range only right it will not go beyond 1 e 9 right so this will be the time complexity order of n log c now quickly we will see one thing uh, the time complexity here the test cases are 100 and n goes to 1 e 9 so all in all, uh, if you go with, you, with this approach, uh, what will be your total time complexity? Your total time complexity will be 1e2 for 100 test cases. And for n can be as long as 1e9. So this uh, order of n will be 1e9 and it will be 1e11. Of course, you cannot do it. Uh, you cannot go beyond 1e7, right? Some constant factor of 1e7, ideally. Uh, otherwise, it will give you a TLE. So Brute force won't work here. You will, you won't be able to go through order of n pairs and verify uh, which one gives the least LCM. Okay, fine. So we are not able to do brute force, but like these are the possible candidates that you know, right? Because if you are not able to do brute force, uh, brute force, how much time does brute force consider here? So the brute force is consuming order of n log c time. Now you want to do better than this. Uh, what is the better than this? n log c. Uh, the better than n log c is uh, maybe square root of n or log n. So the square root of n uh, will consume square root of 10 power 11. So it will be somewhere 10 power 5. So it is desirable. 10 power 5 works. We can do this this many number of operation. And log n, like if I consider the base 2 log, it will be log 
uh, 10 power 11, right? So if you want to find this out, uh, what you can do is, uh, if it is base 2, you can mm, divide by 3 and multiply by 10. So it will be somewhere around 40, not exactly, maybe greater than some 30 operations. But yeah, I'm just assuming. So this can also be done, like log n is also desirable. Uh, so these two will work. If you can figure out a root n based solution or uh, log n based solution, it's amazing. It will work. Now, how do you think? Like, so that, this is just the initial observation. The brute force was not working. Uh, the time complexity was very high. Order of n solution is not working. So we'll naturally think about moving lower down the order. Maybe root n or log n. Why am I thinking about root n here is because when we consider this LCMs, uh, GCDs and all those stuff, uh, factors are very common, right? And you know that to find the factors, you can like, there is a root n complexity involved. That's why I thought about root n. Okay. So there's no uh, magic spell here that I used. Fine. So I was just going through step by step. So yeah, what next? Uh, now uh, in this number theory based question, so you should try to uh, simplify the constraints as much as possible. Now here you can see one thing uh, that you're, even if you limit your search space to this half portion, you are good to go, right? If, even if you are able to find a pair in this part, you are good to go because anyway, the pairs will repeat here. So if you don't get it, what I'm trying to say here is let's just consider n equals to 8. So what are the possible combinations for a and b? So because a and b are positive and they should add up to n, these are the possible combinations, right? So 1 plus 7, 2 plus 6, 3 plus 5, then 4 plus 4, right? 4 plus 4 is n by 2, n by 2. If it was 7, then it would be 3, 3, 4 only, right? n by 2 minus 1, n by 2 plus 1. 4 plus 4, 5 plus 3. 6 plus 2 and 7 plus 1. Now here you can observe one thing automatically. It is okay if we just limit our search space to this part, right? Uh, these guys um, are not useful to us. Anyways, right? So it will just uh, ease out the mental model in your head. So what I am trying to say is uh, just assume, just assume that A is less than equals to B, right? So make this assumption. So if even, even if you consider A is less than equals to B, your search space is reduced. Now we are just working on n by 2 pairs, but it still covers all the possible cases, right? Even if you are able to find a pair in this part, which gives the least LCM, you are good to go. You are still considering all the pairs because order doesn't matter. They have, they have already told you can print A and B in any order. Now, how do you choose this A and B? Like, how do you choose it? Now, I was thinking like, what is LCM? Uh, the LCM of two numbers, A and B is simply a product of a number divided by GCD. So I hope you know this property. We have discussed this in 800 or 900 related questions as well. So GCD into LCM uh, of two numbers it gives the product of numbers. So this is what LCM is. What is the other definition of LCM? Uh, you among two numbers, you take the highest power of individual prime factors, right? So this also you might be knowing it. Uh, so that is LCM. All in all, uh, this was not uh, giving me any fruitful uh, thinking. So what I thought is, uh, if I'm not able to uh, figure out A and B like this, uh, what can be a relation between A and B? Like what should be a relation? So uh, since I have already assumed A is less than B, uh, can I think whether like does A being a factor of B help or that is a B being a multiple of A change anything, right? So this question, like this is a most important part. If you are able to ask this question, then this question, uh, this uh, problem is solved. The question that I'm, that I'm trying to ask is, I was trying to choose AB. I have simplified my constraint. Now the question that come to my mind is, uh, does it help? Like what difference does it make when A is a factor of B? So what difference does it make when A is a factor of B? Uh, does it ease down my calculation or are there any observations that are required when A is a factor of B? So because LCM GCD involves factors and all calculation, right? So I thought, uh, can it help to think in this direction? Does A being a factor change something? Let's just see. Uh, so there's a simple example in front of you, n equals to 8. Uh, what happens when uh, A is a factor of B? We have already assumed guys that A is less than equals to B. So we are only considering this part, right? So if A is a factor of B, does that help in some sense? Factor of B, uh, this is one case and this is one case. And I guess this is very obvious. If A is a factor of B, 2, 4, 3, 9, 4, 12, then automatically the LCM is uh, the larger guy, right? So this is, I guess, elementary school maths. If A is a factor of B, then uh, your LCM, then LCM, of a b is simply b this is very obvious right so this you have already studied so if a is a factor of b means uh, b mod a if b mod a is zero then uh, lcm of a b is simply b fine so this is good this is every time right this is the case every time if a is a factor of b then lcm of a b will be b only right the bigger number but what if uh, a is not a factor of b 
if a is not a factor of b uh, what will be lcm of ab what will be lcm of ab i don't know uh, just, let's just uh, think some cases uh, in our like elementary school days what we used to do uh, if you want to find out lcm of 35 what you are going to do you are going to check the multiples of 5 right so 10 15 20 so on and you will find out that 15 uh, divides 3 and 5 both 15 is the lcm so if lcm so if a is not a factor of b you will see the multiples of the larger number right so this lcm of ab will be at least 2 into b right here for 3 5 you will check uh, first 5 then 10 then 15 and then 20 right so that can be another example like this uh, let's say uh, 3 7 right so first you'll check 14 then you'll check 21 but the lcm the good observation is lcm will always be greater than 2b right lcm will always be greater than 2b and uh, since a is less than b you know for the fact that uh, this b is greater than equals to n by 2 right in this case b is always greater than n by 2 greater than equals to n by 2 right so in this case also b is greater than equals to n by 2 lcm of ab is greater than 2b b is greater than equals to n by 2 and what it says is this entire lcm is greater than n but here if you observe in this case when a was a factor of b your lcm was always b and you know for the fact that this b is less than equals to n here you are getting lcm greater than equals to n and here you are getting lcm always less than equals to n so obviously uh, it pays well to just limit your search space when a is a factor of b right so i'll summarize uh, what we did here we simplified our constraints and then asked this very important question does it help if a is a factor of b if it was a factor of b then my lcm is simply b and since a is less than equals to b b is less than equals to n right the lcm is less than equals to n b i mean the lcm is less than equals to n but if it is not a factor of b the lcm will be at least to b and since i know a is less than equals to b will be, b will be greater than equals to n by 2 my lcm will be at least n right here my all right let's summarize the journey then uh, we wanted uh, two positive integers a and b such that they add up to n and uh, their lcm should be as less as possible we simplified the constraint a less than equals to b and turns out uh, if a is a factor of b then we'll get uh, the optimal answer the lcm will not cross n but if it is not that lcm uh, may or may not cross n always that's why we'll uh, choose this case now can this new knowledge help us come here so a plus b is n right so b can be written as uh, ax now some multiple of a equals to n and uh, again you can say n can be written as a uh, a common into 1 plus x right so what it says is uh, a is a factor of n right so this automatically says that a is a factor of n a is a factor of n so uh, what it says a is a factor of n earlier your search space was those order of n pairs right but now you know that to get the optimal answer you only need to consider factors of n so now your search space has reduced has reduced to just the factors of n now you just figure out the factors of n now your search space just factors of n you just uh, find out all the factors of n and which one of them uh, gives you the optimal answer that is the lcm is minimized you should choose it how are we going to do it? Uh, that's another story. We'll come back to it. But now you see what happened here. You had an order of n search space. And now you just want to look at all the factors of n. And let me tell you, if you don't know about this, you can look at all the factors of n in just order of root n. Okay. If you don't know this, don't worry. You don't need to know, know to watch this video. But I'm just telling that uh, finding out all the factors of a number is just an order of root n operation. Right. So we have come a long way uh, from making our search space from order of n to order of root n. So now we know two things. Uh, firstly, that uh, a is a factor of n. You just need to look out uh, for a in the factors of n, in the divisors of n. And once you figured out the a, uh, which actually minimizes the LCM, you can find out b as well, right? b will be n minus a, right? Uh, because uh, like a plus b is equal to n. And uh, also, uh, this number, this b is still, uh, you can say, divisible by n, right? So if you don't get it, like if 25 mod 5 is 0, then 20 mod 5 is also 0, right? So if n mod 5 is 0, then n minus a mod 5 is also 0, that is b, right? So you have to look out for a in the divisors of n, and once you got an a, uh, you automatically got the b. But how do you find this a? Uh, how do you find this a? We know uh, one thing for sure that LCM of a b, when a is a factor of b, will be b. You want this b to be as less as possible, right? So this a should be as large as possible, right? This a should be as large as possible. Also, it has to be divisible by b, but that is fine, uh, and divisible by n. So, how do you make sure that this is the as large as possible? It is simple. Uh, you want a to be as large as possible, right? So, n mod a should be equal to 0, but it should be as large as possible. 
automatically this bevel shrink fine as large as possible so what you are after is you are after the largest largest divisor of n so our entire problem has shrink down to this question find out the largest divisor of n now this is a very simple thing uh, so how are the divisors of n basically let's just write it here so i am just writing the number line so for a given number n the divisors of n uh, how are they distributed i am just writing it out 1 2 3 4 uh, root n so on till n sometimes like root n and n by 2 are same but usually n by 2 is pretty far apart for n equals to 4 root n and n by 2 are same but it usually n by 2 is very far so like some factors can lie here and some factors can lie here if you know like uh, the uh, when you uh, want to represent n in terms of two factors they will be in pairs one of them will lie here and one of them will lie here so one of them will be like if n equals to n to b then uh, a will be less than equals to n by root n and uh, root n and b will be greater than equals to root n so that's how it works right so fundamental thing here now how are you how are you going to find the largest factor what you can do is uh you can start your search from here for n equals to 2 don't start from 1 uh, because like uh anyway with the trivial case of uh, a equals to 1 and b equals to uh n minus 1 uh, we can consider it but uh, start from n equals to 2 and figure out the smallest guy uh, which divides n so i don't know where this guy will be but uh, let's just assume it is somewhere here it's not 3 but somewhere here in this part so let's just call this guy f and find out n by f so n by f will be somewhere here so this will make sure that you will have uh, the largest divisor of n or the largest factor of n and this also ensures that uh, a is still less than equals to b why uh, because you are starting your search from 2 right even in the worst case, uh, your a will be n by f, that is n by 2, right? So, b is still what? b is n minus n minus n minus n by f. So, f is at least 2. So, you are still maintaining your consider of a less than b. That is pretty simple, yeah. Like, you either you would have to come from here and find out the largest factor of n. But I decided to, if I want to come from here, what you will do is you will uh, start from 2 and uh, you will find out the first guy uh, which divides uh, n and the largest divisor will be simply n by f. Right? And what if you don't find any elements here? Then any which way, uh, you can uh, assume that a is initial value is 1. Right? So, a equals to 1 and uh, b equals to n minus 1, any which way is there. Right? So, that's not a problem. Right? So, I guess that's that. Let's just quickly see the code for it. Alright, so I guess the video has become pretty long. I didn't really realize I spoke so much. Uh, but the code is here. Uh, it's pretty simple code, so I didn't think uh, it is better for you that I code. So, you start from a equals to 1. So, all in all, uh, if you are not able to find a factor from 2 till uh, root n, uh, what you can do is, uh, any which way, uh, a equals to 1 and n minus 1 will give you the optimal answer. So, for a equals to 1 and b equals to n minus 1, for example, let's say 1, 7 in our case, where LCM is still 7, which is still less than n, right? So, that is fine. So, a equals to 1 and n minus 1 will always be your answer if you are not able to find a factor, right? Otherwise, uh, you go from 2 till root n and for the smallest factor that you find here, uh, greater than 1, you can find a equals to n by i and uh, that will be your a and you are sure that is n by i this is this still follows the constraint that a is less than equals to b and then you can print out n minus a yeah so that's that about this question i hope you really got something out of this video i'll see you in the next one